Hi everyone! So today's video I'm going to be talking about the different Lyme tests that are out there. Now there are two different ones and usually the first one is a little less reliable than the second one. But the second one is a little bit more expensive and harder to perform and do which is why most people only go with the first one. First of all, I just want to say that if you are bitten and you still have the tick latched onto you, you can go right to your doctor and they will remove it for you and they can send that tick to the lab and have it tested for Lyme disease. If the, te if the tick is tested and it comes back negative, it doesn't have Lyme disease, then yay, you're not going to get Lyme disease. If the tick comes back positive, that doesn't necessarily mean that you have Lyme disease which means that you would still need to be tested. Uh, if you, you know, have no recollection of being bitten by a tick, you don't have the tick to test, um, you can still be tested if you're having symptoms and that's what your doctor decides to do. So the first test is the ELISA test, E-L-I-S-A, um, and it's done with a sample of your blood. The ELISA test measures the immune's response to the Lyme bacteria. In the lab, the spirochetes are placed with the patient's blood, and the reaction that takes place gives the doctors an idea of whether or not the test is positive or negative. Unfortunately, the ELISA test only detects a third to a half Lyme disease cases, so it's not as reliable as we would like it to be. But there is a second test that is done, and it's called the Western Blot Test. The Western Blot is a lot more difficult to explain, so I'm just going to say that the Lyme bacteria cells are disrupted by electrical currents, and with the Western Blot, the way that they determine whether it's positive or negative are uh, bands show up, and based on these bands, whether they are positive or negative, determines whether or not the patient has Lyme disease. With this test, there are some disputes and controversies and arguments. Um, one of them is uh, how many bands are actually required to diagnose Lyme disease. Some people believe that only one band is required, while others believe that you need five positive bands, um, or three out of five positive bands. So there's, you know, there's really some debate about it. There is also some talk about how chronic Lyme disease um, doesn't necessarily show up on this test because it's been in the body for so long. The controversy with the Western blot is how the test is actually performed and how the test is interpreted by the lab technician and the doctors. Some of the problems with the test are how much serum is used from you know, one technician to the other. Different labs use different strands of the Lyme spirochete, which is possible to, you know, mess up different results. The way that different strips are prepared um, differs from one lab to another. And then the way that the, the actual bands are read, you know, can, different from, can differ from one lab to another and can even differ from one lab technician to another lab technician. You know, someone might see a band as it not being strong enough to be a positive, but someone else might read that as, well, it's it's showing up, so I'm going to say it's a positive. There's a lot of different disputes about the different Lyme disease tests. Also, all of the information that I am putting into this video is found on a website, which I will post in the bar below, as well as in this book that I've been reading. It's called Beating Lyme, and it's by Constance A. Bean. But it's a pretty good book, so if you're interested in reading a book about Lyme, this is the one that I would recommend. Um, I had someone recommend it to me, and I'm glad that she did because I've actually enjoyed it. It gives a lot of like history on Lyme, as well as other infectious diseases, and it also gives a lot of information about just other chronic illnesses like ALS, MS, Parkinson's, chronic fatigue, stuff like that. So it is really interesting if you want to pick it up. I got it on Amazon for like five bucks, so <laughs> it's a good deal. But that's about it, and I hope that you learned a little bit more about the different tests that are out there. And uh, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye, guys!
Another thing I want to mention that I forgot about until I was editing is people can test negative on the Lyme disease test but still be diagnosed with Lyme disease based on you know their symptoms and their medical history and how you know what their doctor feels what their doctor thinks there are plenty of people who have Lyme disease that test negative and that's just you know that sucks and we should fight Lyme disease with science and not politics and that's another video that I plan on making is you know talking about more controversies about this disease so okay I just you know forgot to add that part when I was doing my actual shooting for the video so thanks for watching